Hi, this is Renaud Angeran from Sophist, and I'm going to cover the risk of thermal burn injuries and how to minimize this risk as per standard IEC 62368-1, which I explained in previous videos, applies to IT products, telecommunication products, and audio video products. So a disclaimer, it's only a high level overview, we're going to go quick. Uh, you will need to read the standard carefully because there's a lot of details into it. Okay, and we're not lawyers, we're not compliance consultants. So let's go right into it. When it comes to thermal burn, this is the, the three block uh, model that the IEC standard shows us. And for example, high temperature, okay, is energy. It is transferred to the body that's where the hazard comes from. Okay, in this case, typically the body, uh, a body part such as a finger, for example, touches a hot part, and the body part well has thermal resistance. And for example, the skin is going to get a burn. Right, and uh, there's a model for protection against this kind of injury, which involves putting a safeguard between the energy source and the body. Okay, which could be thermal insulation probably the first thing everybody thinks of. It could be a number of other things, such as keeping the, the parts uh, less hot, uh, making the parts that are hot less accessible. There's a lot of things that can be done. And the least effective kind of safeguard typically is to ask uh, the person to wear personal protective equipment, such as gloves, for example, or uh, to provide them with instructions such as, hey, warning, this is really hot. Okay, this is not very, uh, very strong type of safeguard. The best type of safeguard is to act on the product itself to make sure that there's no accessible hot parts. Okay, a few basics before we get to the, the meat uh, of, of, um, of the part of the standard that touches on thermal burn injuries. Touching a hot surface can be more or less dangerous. If the material's thermal conductivity is higher, it is more dangerous. Metal will burn your skin much faster than wood for the same temperature. Okay, And if contact is, uh, is more prolonged in time, if you touch the hot surface for one minute, of course, it's much more dangerous than touching it for one second and immediately removing the, removing the finger. Okay. Also, the danger of getting a burn injury is higher with accessible parts. Okay, the parts that are really easy to to get to and easy to touch. Okay, uh, especially anything like a button, a knob, something like this that is likely to be touched uh, during the normal operation of the product. Okay, or, or, or during maintenance, servicing of the product or so. Okay, now we have a very interesting uh, table here, and I'm looking at version 2023 of the IEC 62368-1 standard. And as you can see, uh, you have class 1, class 2, class 3 energy source. Okay, and this just looks at the thermal energy source. That's so why TS123. Now, here we have four columns to the right, and as I mentioned, metal will burn much faster than some other materials, right? At the other end of the spectrum is wood, for example. Plastic and rubber also will be uh, much slower in burning, okay? The metal, metal will be uh, faster, typically, okay? So that's why there are four columns. Now, let's just look at metal. And... In uh, TS1, all of this is not likely to send you to hospital, not likely to cause an injury that pushes you to want to see a doctor, basically. Okay, TS2, well, that might send you to hospital. That might really cause an injury. And TS3 uh, is, well, anything higher than TS2, as you can see. That one might cause serious injury or even death. Okay, so... They make distinctions between uh, the cases where you might be in long contact with part of a product versus, you see here, surfaces that do not have to be touched to operate. Okay, it's not likely to be touched and it might be touched pretty fast. Okay, and some of them between, between 1 and 10 seconds 
yeah, likely to be touched, but like really quick. It's like, um, yeah, uh, turning a knob or something like this, right? And then at the other end of the spectrum here at the top is something like, for example, in a wearable device. And, uh, well, think, for example, of an Apple Watch. And the Apple Watch, while it's in contact with the skin, has some sensors, has some metal parts. Yeah, you don't want to get very hot here because if it's worn on the body for more than eight hours, maybe continuously actually, it could burn the body, uh, it could burn the skin a little bit. Okay, so the, the limits are tighter here. Now, they go again at it and um, you can see 43 to 48, 43 to 48 uh, is the same <laughs> here, okay. Uh, but but you have some little notes and so on, okay, to clarify. I'm not going to go into all the small details. We don't have time. This would take hours and hours. Uh, but for the other ones, the temperature tends to be higher, okay, which makes sense. Then here, the, the yellow, the, the orange part might, again, cause injury, maybe send you to hospital. They also clarify thermal source uh, class 1 uh, energy source, okay, does not exceed the limits that are shown here. Okay, all of these limits in green. Uh, oops, sorry. Does not uh, exceed these limits, even. Uh, okay, and even if it's if there's an abnormal condition or single fault condition, it might go into TS2, but it definitely does not go into TS3. I cover these uh, these topics about abnormal conditions and single fault conditions in another video about this standard about the basic concepts. Okay, now what is TS2 uh, is well exceeds uh, at least one of the limit of, of TS1. Okay, cannot cannot be here, uh, but still does not exceed the TS2 limits uh, under any of the conditions. Okay, and again, bodies worn on the body in direct contact with the skin. That, that's a special case, okay, in this standard. This is new, I believe, in the 2023 version. This was different in the previous version, uh, edition 3 of the of this standard. Okay, I also mentioned accessible parts. Uh, that's in the title here, uh, the header of this, um, this table. You really look at the accessible parts, and then you look at the, the temperature and the material and the uh, how long it's supposed to be uh, in contact with the skin. Um, what does that mean, accessible part? Okay, it means people can easily access it without really having to open maybe the device with a special tool and so on and so forth, right? And there are some special requirements for this special case where uh, they require, the product requires heat for the intended function. And they have a few examples here. Now, there are some requirements. The person should not have to touch the hot part. It's not likely that under normal operating conditions it's going to be touched. Even during maintenance or servicing of the product, also it's not likely to be in contact with the skin. Uh, there is an instructional safeguard. I'm going to get to that. And also uh, children are not likely to touch it. So all of these requirements together, all of them have to be fulfilled in this a special case and this is the end of the video we're getting to this some examples of instructional safeguard this is in annex f5 of the standard okay and the standard tells you which ones are a must which ones are not a must it's not always a must to have everything of course okay i hope this was instructive thank you for following the video